looked down, I looked down, and I could see the flow playing its own game. It was moving. And my feet struggled to stay stable. My eyes couldn't hold it all anymore. They too let me down in the middle of everywhere. Tearing and shivering, I ran to the place people ask for some privacy, the washroom, and dialed the numbers that can immediately take me to the person who can stop me from lashing my life out of me, my little brother. I told him, Farhan, I think I will give in today. I cannot fight any longer. Save me before it's too late. Suicidal thoughts have always lurked in my head. Merges whenever it feels like, tempting me to give in to its demand. I don't, even when I want to. I refuse to give in. I fight it. And my mind, it has two voices. One is emotional one and manipulative, and the other is very logical and matter-of-fact-like. And caught in between the two is me. Fighting your emotions and thoughts drains you down, mentally and physically, too. Sometimes you feel like enough is enough. Anxiety, quite a close friend of depression, I would say. I'm no psychiatrist to list the difference, but I'm that girl who's in relationship with it. And this is what I know of, uh, of it with my personal experience. Both are very unpleasant to be with and very, very clingy. It has always towered over me. It's a piercing feeling, and it cannot, I cannot pin it down and say this is exactly how I feel. Uh, what I want you to imagine a, is a puppeteer maneuvering a puppet. I always wear a beautiful smile. Like I've been crowned with the title of being, you know, queen of happiness, you can say. I'm funny, I crack jokes. If no one laughs, I laugh at them. I'm very talkative. Uh, I'm always chirpy and cheery, but in my head, I'm always twitchy. Deep within lies something faceless, something nameless, and I don't know how to christen it. It's a void, is it? A fear, I don't know. A wound, could be. Taking time to heal and healing too hurts. It's beastly too hibernates when it wants to, and suddenly it wakes up. And when it wakes up, I change. It eats me, and I let it. A worm, for sure. Maggotish, you know, wriggling through my mind, eating away the peace, the confidence, hope. Once the maggot is awake, when it is in action, you become weaker and weaker mentally and physically. The tour that I took you with me now was into my mind. And how did this all begin? Can I trace it back? And my answer is yes. Let me tell you a story. The first time I felt I was alienated, I broke down. I called my friend and I cried. Now I know what Akuna would have felt, I sobbed. In the US, all by herself, and my confused friend asked me, who's Akuna? Anyone I know? The main character, the thing around her neck was my solemn answer. And she blurted out laughing. She found it very funny. But I did not. I really did feel what Akuna would have gone through. And it was not funny. Because I was going through it. And it was a daunting feeling, dark and ugly. I'm a literature student, and alienation is a recurring theme in many texts. I've analyzed it, I've critiqued it, and I've met many lonely characters trapped in pages of the books. But never was I ever unlucky before to experience the horrors of alienation. I had not felt it before until I decided to brave it and take a step out of my comfort zone. I left my safe haven, 
and relocated myself to a new place, which was challenging in every possible sense. And here I was, like an alien in the midst of nowhere. So this is how I was introduced to depression or anxiety or whatever you may call it. But the attraction was very strong. And I became weaker and weaker in its grip. And eventually started to lose myself. Those months were purgatorial. Like the video in the movie, The Ring. Spiraling, nauseating, scary. Sleep became a stranger. And I was wide awake throughout the day, night. Time did not seem to have a difference. Day, night, it came, it went, and it didn't matter to me. Because I was wide awake. It had been weeks since I had slept. I was drowning in an existen existential crisis. I was feeling purposeless, worthless, lost, uprooted, scared, hopeless, suicidal. That was when I started to talk to my dad. He told me everything would be fine. His voice was reassuring. He started to spend more and more time with me. And that was not right. I shouldn't be having these conversations with him because he's no more. Sleep deprivation has resurrected my dead dad and I'm not exaggerating. I was having these conversations with him and I call these time, this time of my life the dark ages. I was seeing my therapist, my friends were there, my family too was around. Despite all this support, I was struggling in my head drowning in my thoughts. A fear, a doubt was always there. And I felt alone and lost. Mind was murky. I don't want to reveal, I don't want to relive those days. I'm, it's very scary. This feeling of alienation is disastrous, destructive, and dangerous. Robin Williams braved it with a belt, and I can totally understand it depression or anxiety or whatever you may call it, is very kind. It hugs you tight until you suffocate, until you can't breathe. And it does not let you go. It holds you by the hand and shows the path. It is by your side, cheering when you push yourself down the sixth floor of that building. It is by your side, assuring everything will be fine when you gobble down the 60 pills from the prescribed medicine, when you are supposed to take only two, it's by your side insisting to run straight into the lake and let it all end. Or worse, like Robin Williams, hang yourself with a belt. That thought itself is painful. But when you want to end it, you want to end it. Simple as that. But, well, there's always a but always and here is the but in my story an important but but it takes immense strength to fight all this back it's usually impossible that is why many give up it's easy to give in and end all this mess misery the confusion but some don't some fight it and i fought it too i couldn't have done it all alone surviving you need support, you need to reach out, you need people to stop you from being stupid. And I did that. I learned to live, I learned to love myself. I learned to live, actually. And to date, it is the most difficult challenge to stand in, to stand in front of the mirror and tell yourself that you are worth it. I cried in front of the mirror unable to utter those three words to myself. I couldn't bring myself to say, I love you. But I didn't give up. With the help of an amazing human being, I slowly opened the doors to self-love. I resorted to self-care. Fitness training kept my mental health sane. And I'm consistent, and I go on. There are days even now, I feel like a sloth. Oh, I can't, I want to give up, I feel sluggish. I feel like enough, I'm tired, 
I feel like walking into the sea and end it all, jump off that cliff, it comes, it goes, but I don't dive into those thoughts anymore and I don't let myself indulge. It's a constant fight forever. My split mind bickering with each other, but luckily my logical mind always wins because my two daughters always stand by the side of it and they give me reasons to go on, not to give up. So it, is, it takes immense strength to wear these insecurities, doubts and fears as a cape, to be a wonder woman, not a woman who wanders over things. It takes immense strength to stand up because it takes a lot of mental stamina, energy to do so. You're already emotionally drained. Sometimes it's humanly impossible. But that is probably why, and that is probably why, people try to listen to the arrival of a train by fearlessly resting their head on that track, looking for answers they cannot find in their life. They choose the most gruesome way to end it all because living through all whatever they are going through seems more grueling at that moment, at that moment, and they end it. Well, what I have learned from not giving into this horror is that anything is possible. Anything is humanly possible. In this mind-boggling maze, when you are lost, tell yourself, let me find my way out. It is important to reach out, call out, save me please. Sometimes help arrives, people come, try to save you. Sometimes help does not come. Sometimes you can't find it in others. No one might be there for you. That is when you should look for that someone. That someone who can save you. There was someone who saved me, she still does. Someone very powerful, myself. I found me. There was someone very powerful within me. Like I told you, my mind is both rational and emotional. Let the rational mind take control of you and you will save yourself. The hardest walk in life is walking alone. But it is also the walk that makes you the strongest. It is, this is true in every possible sense of it. I don't call it loneliness or alienation anymore. I call it me time. The time I've been given to discover myself. It allows me to think, assess, adjust, and find myself. Eventually, I fall in love with that beautiful person who desperately want to be loved by me. Now I find reasons to fall in love with myself over and over again. I love the fact that I run with my three-inch heels if I want to. I love the fact that I have jumped over a gate when I was fully pregnant, right? I've discovered me, and I'm working on a healthy relationship with myself. I still, tr I still struggle, but I, I am going on. I'm going on. It's, I will be consistent. And I will continue. Let us not let life give us lemons because there are plenty of recipes out there with those lemons, right? We can whip up something amazing each time, every single time. So I'm not born to take my life away. I'm born to live my life to the fullest until my Lord decides it's time to come now. Thank you.